a spelling analysis for one syllable words. And spelling analysis is a systematic process for learning how words are read and spelled and analyzing why they are spelled that way. To do this, I want you to put away your books, put away your teacher's guide, and take out a pencil or a whiteboard and a whiteboard marker and a piece of paper. That's all you need because you are going to take off your teacher hat and you are going to put on your student hat and you are going to be students right now. And I am going to teach you some new words. And I have chosen these one syllable words as words that you probably do not know. So you experience this as a student experiences it. All right? So our first word is fleer. Rachel felt ashamed when her friends began to fleer. Go ahead and say fleer. Fleer. Now I want you to sound out fleer. O E. Use E double E. Er. All right. Now go ahead and write fleer. As you write it, please sound it out. I'd like to hear you. Good. Now I would like you to help me write it by sounding it out. Ready? O E R. Now we're going to mark this, and we're going to mark words by underlining multi letter phonograms. Do you see any multi letter phonograms we should underline? E double E. So let's do that. This helps train the eye to see this as a single phonogram making a sound in this word. Now let's sound out this word together. O E R, fleer. All right? Go ahead and put down your pencils. You won't need them until you are ready to write the word. Oh, by the way, what does fleer mean? To make fun of, yes. Or to laugh in a disrespectful and jeering manner. That is a real word. <laughs> and of the next very rare and real words, this is my favorite. I use it all the time now. The next word is groaks. The dog groaks whenever Sarah sits on the ground with her food. Groaks. Go ahead and say groaks. groaks. Let's sound it out. G, er, o. Use two letter o that you may not use at the end of English words. Use talk. S. Go ahead and write grokes. As you write it, please sound it out so I can hear you. <laughs> now help me to write it and help me write it as sound it out so I can write it. G, er, o, k, s. How will I mark grokes? Underline O. Yeah. Let's sound it out together. G, er, o, k, s, groaks. What does groaks mean? Kind of. It means to silently watch someone while they are eating, hoping to be invited to join them. <laughs> I tell my dog now, oh, you're groaking again. <laughs> All right, our next word is call. Even though Jonathan is moving too slowly, Eva will need to wait to call until the trail widens. Call. Let's sound it out. Oh, go ahead and say it. Call. Let's sound it out. Use a k, s, a. This is an a, o, u, o. Go ahead and write it. And sound it out as you write it. <coughs> Go ahead and help me write it. Ah, <coughs> oh. Is there anything to mark? Nope. So let's sound it out. Ah, <coughs> oh, call. What does call mean? To pass. Close. To pass in a mountain range. <laughs> the next word is cam. The clock has so much cam, it is difficult to read the time. Cam. 
Say it. Cam. Let's sound it out. Use a talk. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and write it. And as you write it, please sound it out. Help me to write it. Ah. Mm. Is there anything to mark? Help me to spell it or to sound it out. Ah. Mm. Cam. What does cam mean? Yeah, distorted. The next word is cobs. Cobs live in the grasslands of western Uganda. Cobs. Go ahead and say cobs. Sound it out. Use a talk. Ah, the z. Use a s z. Sound. I'd like to hear you sound it out. <laughs> and then help me sound it out. Ah, the z. What sound of s z did this say? It's second sound. So we'll put a little two over it to remind us it said its second sound. Let's sound it out. Ah, the z cobs. What's a cob? Yeah, this animal here is a cob. All right, you can take off your student hats for a moment and go ahead and put on your teacher hats. <laughs> and while you do this, take out your spelling analysis quick reference. It was included in your teacher training manual. And turn to the side that says one syllable words. So this quick reference has two sides and you will need the one syllable word side. We are going to step through this process together. And I am going to read the role of the student. And you are going to be the teacher this time. As the teacher, you will begin by saying the word. Go ahead, teachers. Okay. Then you will read the sentence and repeat the word. We took the kayaks out to the cave. Okay. Then the students will say the word, which will be me, K. Then, while the students segment the word, finger spell and cue which phonogram to use if there are multiple options. So you will finger spell and cue. Go ahead and just finger spell that direction. Does that make sense? So I'll sound it out. And you'll have to tell me use. No. Yeah, use k. A. Use two letter A that may be used at the end of making the shirts. Then the students write the word, sounding it out as they write. K. A. And then you will write the word as the students segment it aloud. K. A. And then. You'll ask how to mark the word while the students give you that analysis. So you will say, underline to letter A, which you'll do on your boards. And then the students will sound out the word and read it. K A K. Would you like to go through that one more time? Would that be helpful? All right. And this time, too, why don't you go to the point of writing the word, too? Maybe I'll stand here, because then I can kind of be your student as well. But hold up a board, write it when you, it's your turn to write it. And also, be aware that when the students are sounding out the word, you don't need to. That's one of the things that's really challenging, is students, um, teachers often do the whole spelling analysis process for the students instead of letting the students do everything except the parts where they need clarification. So let's go ahead and try this. Teachers will say the word. Okay. 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 Then the teachers will read the sentence and repeat the word. We took the kayaks out to the K. K. Then the students will say the word. K. And then while the students segment the word, you, the teacher, will finger spell and cue. So I will sound it out. You will just finger spell and cue. A. 
Then the students will write the word, sounding it out as they write it, <laughs> A. And then you will write the word. Go ahead and hold up your notebook and write it as I sound it out. <laughs> A. And then you will ask. Mm -hmm. And I'll say underline two letter A. And then you'll point as I sound, as the student sounded out, A, K. Is that helpful? So a K, what is a K? It's a small or low-lying island or bank composed of sand, um, especially in the Caribbean. All right. So now go ahead and take off your teacher hats again. And you're going to go back to being students. So put away your spelling analysis card, and you'll experience this a little bit more. OK, the next word is gleed. When cooking over an open fire, it is best to wait for the gleed. 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 Go ahead and sound it out. G, O, E. Use E double E, D. Write it, and as you write it, sound it out. And then help me to write it. G O E D. And how will we mark it? Underline the E. And let's sound it out together. G O E D. Gleed. What is gleed? Yeah, coals. Are they supposed to say W or just make the sound? Um, it's fine if they tell you use EWE, but we're really emphasizing the sounds. Um, but what we do not want is to say G L E E D, because that's not telling us anything about how this word is read or how it's spelled, right? The next word is scud. Lindsay pulled her jacket tightly around her in the cold scud. Scud. Go ahead and say scud. Scud. Let's sound it out. Sk. Use a k. A d. Go ahead and write it. Sound it out as you write it. Sk. And then help me write it. Sk. A d. Is there anything to mark? No. Nope. So let's sound it out. Sk. A d. Scud. What is a scud? Mm -hmm. A cold, gusty wind. The next word is skeg. The skeg located at the back of the surfboard helps to improve stability. Skeg. Skeg. Sound it out. Sk. Use a tall k. E g. Go ahead and write it. Sound it out as you write it. Mm -hmm. And then help me write it. G. And then is there anything to mark? No. So let's sound it out. Skeg. What is a skeg? Yeah, that fin rudder. All right. The last word is kench. I jumped when Jack began to kench. 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 Let's sound it out. Use a talk. E -n -ch. Go ahead and write it and sound it out as you write it. Mm -hmm. And help me to write it. E -n -ch. And how will we mark it? Underline the ch. Oh, underline the ch. We want to emphasize those sounds. Help me sound it out. K -e -n -ch. Kench. Now, why can we not spell it like this? What, did, what would this say? Sench. Why? C always softens to s when followed by an E, I, or Y. So we know it can't be this. All right, what does kench mean? 
means to laugh loudly. <laughs> All right, so what are the benefits of spelling analysis? This is the process you've been experiencing. First of all, it is multi-sensory. And I want to think through this really carefully because the very first way that you experience this word is auditorily, which is how we experience speech, right? We are writing what we hear, but we experience the words auditorily, and then we use that auditory part to use our phonemic awareness skills to segment the word. Then it's also kinesthetic because after you've gone through the process of finger spelling, the student is writing this word. They're experiencing that word through writing. And the very last thing they do is they see it. Then they hear it again and segment again, practicing phonemic awareness again. They see it again, and they practice um, blending it together. But do you see how they have multiple opportunities to experience how this word is read and spelled and why? And it doesn't leave any question as to why this word is read this way or spelled this way. And this is really important. And I'd like to contrast this too with the way we typically teach reading. It's typically taught first visual and then auditory. But here we start auditory and we move towards visual and we make all of those connections very explicit. So spelling analysis practices the skills of reading that we've been learning about, those foundational skills. It practices phonemic awareness when you're segmenting the word. It practices systematic phonics by learning which phonograms are used to spell those words, which spelling rules, and by blending those words back together. It practices word level fluency. You develop fluency reading words through this process. You can learn new vocabulary, as you all have today. Spelling analysis taught well builds independence. So yes, you invest time teaching some words, but if you think about this, a student coming into kindergarten has about 10,000 words in their vocabulary. Can you teach them how to spell every word in their vocabulary? You can't. You need to teach them the process that they need to hear the word, think of the sounds, and how to spell independently. So when spelling analysis is done well, you are just cueing those sounds where there's multiple options for spelling, and then they're beginning to learn, oh yeah, there's multiple ways to spell E. Those are words I need to think about. You know, which spelling of E is that? A few tips for teaching spelling analysis. Provide hints for phonograms with multiple sounds. We've been talking about that. And I hope with these words you experience the need for that, right? I tried to choose words where you'd be like, hmm, I wonder which phonogram that's going to be. That's how your students feel about words that you maybe think are really easy to spell. It's also important that the students are segmenting the words, practicing that skill. And if they're not segmenting when you ask them to, you can model it by whispering. So if you ask them to segment the word light, Light. And then you can slowly get quieter and quieter until they're doing all of that work. And then only provide help when needed. Again, this is not all about the teacher. This is about the teacher assisting the student in becoming independent. So spelling analysis is embedded in both foundations and in essentials. And in foundations, you'll see that the chart um, looks like that chart there on your left. And it's, it includes the word, the sentence, how to say to spell that word, which we are going to get much uh, more deeply into uh, in day three of this training, how to mark the word, and any spelling hints you'd give as you mark the word. Essentials has a more in-depth spelling analysis kind of list. So you'll see the word and the sentence. You'll see the number of syllables. Again, we'll explain how to use that, how to say to spell it, and then it will actually segment every syllable for you because we found some teachers were struggling with segmenting words clearly. So we provided that for Essentials teachers. And the reason Essentials at this time has all of this information is the Essentials words are much longer. They're much more complicated. Foundations has very simple words for the most part. 
Essentials will also include how to mark it and how to um, write it and the spelling tips. And it also includes some vocabulary and morphology as well as the parts of speech. So there's a lot more information in those essentials lists. All right, do you have any questions at this point? The first one is, do we teach all of the strokes? And someone pointed out to me yesterday that in foundations, it actually says to you exactly which stroke to teach when. So when I answered that, no, you don't need to teach all of the strokes at one time, um, that was really for students using rhythm of handwriting and essentials where you're teaching off of the spelling analysis or where you're teaching off the rhythm of handwriting card. Um, but in foundations, it'll tell you in this lesson, we're learning the swing stroke. In this lesson, we're learning the down stroke. And then it will teach you how to put those together into a phonogram. So that's all thought out for you with foundations. Now, I've been waiting for this question of how do you say the sound er? <laughs> because this is hard. Let's say er together. Can you sustain it? Er. Can you sing it? Er. Kind of. Can you make it louder or softer? Er. Yeah, kind of. Is it blocked? Er. What is it blocked by? Your tongue. Yeah. So this, this letter R, the sound R, is actually very difficult. It's a very unusual sound. Many people learning English struggle to say the sound. If I remember correctly, um, in like speech books, there are two or three different ways that people form the sound, and it sounds right. So not every person even says it exactly the same. However, what's really key here is this. It's a consonant that's kind of like a vowel, right? It has some properties of a vowel. You can sustain it. It can be made kind of louder and softer, but it is blocked. So when you say er and you cut it, er, it is a consonant. But what happens in words like her and first? Yeah, it's actually a vowel, and it's an R-controlled vowel. That er sound kind of robs the vowel sound, and it sounds like er. So er is a R-controlled vowel. So it's pretty, it's, it has a little bit more complexity. But what I like to do when I'm teaching it is er, cut, is consonant, er, it's cut. And you saw the teachers in the videos doing that, right? And I think you even heard the little kindergarten student on day one saying, like a consonant, er, you can't sing it. <laughs> and she had learned that it's, you stop. There's one other phonogram that is a little bit like a consonant in the vowel. Do you happen to know which one? Yeah, ooh, ooh. You can kind of sing it, but is it blocked? Yes, and this comes into our silent final E rules because it acts a little bit like a vowel, but it is a consonant. Mm -hmm. And then what is the best way to organize game cards in phonogram tiles? So uh, may I use this as an example? So one option for game cards is to use little boxes like this and sort the, what was that? at the dollar store, where people also use little soap dishes and have one set in each. And then in the classroom, you can put the game cards that they've already been taught in their boxes and then add to it each time a new phonogram is taught. And one of the schools was telling me that they actually have a student helper who's in charge of going to find the new phonogram for that, that lesson that's been taught and adding it to those boxes. Um, some people color code them too because you need um, a book face version and a version in your handwriting for many of the games. So you can have two different color boxes. And I noticed this person even has a little timer put in for some of the games, so that's fun. Um, one of the ideas I've heard for phonogram tiles for classrooms is to put magnets on the back. And many people ask us, why do you not publish them with magnets? At this point, we can't actually produce them at a price that would make sense for you. It would be so expensive that, um, yeah, no one would want to buy them. And so if we ever figure that out, we'll let you know. <laughs> 
But in the meantime, um, one way for classrooms that some people have liked is to put little magnets on the back that come with stickers and to put them on like a cookie sheet or another school buys magnetic whiteboards and stores them on there. And then they move the ones that they need to the other side and use them that way. So those are some options for you. Yes. Another option is we bought um, these little craft boxes. Mm -hmm. They have little dividers and they have a lid much like this, only it just has little dividers. And then we'd have several game tile kits divided, like the whole alphabet. And so then when you're, when they're working at a station with maybe another child, there's enough letters for them to make their words, like their, you know, their new vocabulary words or what have you. And, um, That's a great idea too. So to put, to make, to combine um, phonogram tile sets and then have them sorted by letter in little craft boxes or sorted by phonogram. So that's a great idea as well in stations. Are there any other ideas that you've used in your classrooms that you'd like to share about how to organize phonogram game tiles or phonogram game cards or even the phonogram cards? Yes. Um, as far as organizing, the reason these are done um, by game is because the class, it was really fun um, for my second grade class, um, when, I, when I was teaching them how to play these games, the kids um, had like an LOE circuit. And so there were five groups and in every group there are at least four kids. And so and at each circuit in the classroom, there was a game. And so we taught them how to, you know, use the rubber band to bind it back, bind it back up. And the, all the rules on, you know, somebody will be the leader of that group who would pass out the cards and who would organize the little card and, and uh, the game. And then we would ring a bell after about 10 minutes and then they'd move to the next station, leave the game there, move to the next station. So then they'd get to experience all the games and they would usually do this on a Friday and that would be their activity. And you know, they're practicing and having fun. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. To have stations with different games and those games already set up for that station. That's fabulous. If you have any other tips that you want to share as we go, uh, just let me know and we would be glad to make a time for you to do that.